We're going to be reading these three, and then we're going to jump right into this discussion. Amen. 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 So in the King James Version, Philippians 3, 13 through 14 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. New International Version says it like this. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining for, toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the Amplified Version amplifies it like this. I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own yet. I like that. Mm -hmm. Amplified says, yet. Because I'm going to get it. Mm -hmm. But one thing I do, it is my one aspiration. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal. To win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. Amen. 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 So today we're going to make a decision to move ourselves out of the way and to follow Jesus. Amen. Making a decision and following through. Amen. 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 So let's just look at our text again. I've already given you the background on how we got here, but I just need you to know that God is going to help us to do this. Amen. Don't ever think that you've got to do this in your own strength, because later on in this very same book, Paul tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So never, and that's where we get the secret. Remember, I don't know if any of you were with me when I did the word on the secret, but up above that verse, Paul says, I know the secret. And the secret is, you never had to do it in your own strength. Praise the Lord. He's going to give you the strength Thank to you. make these decisions. He's going to give you the wisdom to make these decisions. But we've got to have relationships. Say relationship. 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 If you don't talk to God, He ain't going to hardly bother you. Now, He still speaks. But if you want a personal, personal conversation, you got to get personal with him. Amen. 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 So, as I said, we're going to lay this foundation down, and we're expecting everything from here on out to be better. Say better. 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 It's going to be better because we are going to be better. Yes. All right. We're getting better right now. It's already better. Praise yes. the Lord. How about that? Yes, it is. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. Yes. So, let's look back upon some verses, foundation scriptures. Excuse me. Pop this on now so I can see it better. There we go. Yeah, that's good. All right. In verse 13 of all three of these verses, these uh, versions, excuse me, in the uh, King James Version, when it says, I count not myself to have apprehended. Is that what it said? Mm -hmm. Apprehended what? <laughs> that's the question. In the New International Version, it says in verse 13, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. Well, what is it? And then in Amplified Version, in verse 13, verse 13, it says, I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own yet. What is it that you're trying to apprehend, that you're trying to take hold of, that you're trying to capture? This is what it is. It's three things. Three things. You want to know Christ. You want to be like Christ. Yeah. And this is my favorite. To be all Christ had in mind for us. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. Ain't that good? That blessed my soul. I just had to stop right there. I said to know Christ. To be like him. And to be all that he intended for me to be. Yes. Do you know how many years we spend as human beings trying to find our purpose in life? 
when all we have to do is go to the Creator. This is the thing that Paul was saying he's trying to apprehend. He's trying to take hold of this. He's trying to capture this. And if you look in the uh, above verses, he's talking about that he wants to know God. He wants to know him more deeply, more intimately, to be acquainted with him, fellowship with him. Amen. Spend time with him. Perceive and to recognize and to understand the wonders of his person. Have you ever just sat in wonder of God? It's like, God, I don't know how you did that, but thank you. Oh, then you just think about, how about just think about the natural order of things? The fact that as we sit here and it looks like we're sitting still, that the earth is moving. Mm -hmm. Or that nothing is really not moving. Everything, the molecules in your body right now are moving. We are moving beings. We're supposed to move. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, and to be like Christ, that's to know him, to know him, to know him. To be like him is to have the power of his resurrection flowing over in us and out of us so it can transform us, mm. transform our spirits into his likeness. We are being transformed by the renewing of our what? Mind. Mind. Where do the decisions come from? Mm. Up here in your head. It happened, I heard Bishop Jake says it happens in your head first yeah. before it happens on the outside. So we want to be like Christ. So you have to make a decision and say, you know, I want to be like Christ. Now sometimes what we don't tell young Christians is that there will be pain. Yes. All right. <laughs> pain is normal. Struggle will be normal. Confusion sometimes will creep in. And try to mess up with your mess your piece up, but you still are you are striving to be like Christ. Say to be like Christ. To be like Christ. Say to know Christ. To know Christ. And thirdly, we want to be all Christ has in mind for us. Yes. This blessed my soul because I have always prayed. You know, well, let me take that always out. I repent. You know, you had a prayer sometime where you asking God for what you want. Amen. Amen. Lord, I want this, and if you would do this, then I'll do that, and making all these promises to God. And I can stand before you as a witness that sometimes I truly believe this. You got a relationship with God, you, anybody got, we, who have kids, yeah. or even if you've had somebody that you're concerned about, they can worry you so <laughs> until you didn't even want to get it, but you'll get it for them. Just because they ask, and just to get, to get, get them to be quiet over there. Just, okay, they had it, get it. I truly believe that my Heavenly Father has done that for me several times. Only for me to come back, brother, and say, you know what, God? I don't want this no more. <laughs> Can you take it back? Can you take it back while I'm not? Can you refund? You know, can we get out of my bag? <laughs> got the receipt. Still got the receipt. I guess I kind of knew when I kept receiving up, I was going to take it back. That's what I'm talking about. God would just, he, if, when you have a relationship with him, even when you keep asking and keep asking, he'll say, okay, hand it your way. Go on. When you get through, I'll be right here. <laughs> and don't you find yourself, Jesse, have to come right back to him where you left him. Isn't that, oh, that'll preach right there, where you left him. Because when you decided to do your thing, you left him. Come on. You left what he intended for you. So we have to be in the mindset that I'm making a decision that I want to be everything God intended for me to be when he made me. We've got to let some things go. Come on. Mm -hmm. How you got here is that that wasn't up to you. Right. You know? Who, what family you were born in, that wasn't left up to you. Even where you were raised up wasn't left up to you. You were born where you were born. You got the skin you got. You got the, the faculties of whatever you have. And God has a plan for you. Had one from the beginning. Amen? Amen. So we've got to be all that Christ has in mind for us. And in order to do that, we've got to make a decision to let him have his perfect word. Come on. Mm -hmm. Gotta let him come on in and, 
and do some di Oh, y'all remember that, that, that certain pastor priest not too long ago where he had the nice little file, you know, you know, guys. Try no, he started off with sandpaper. Yeah. You know, like, okay, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to work on you easy, but you got some stuff. Mm -hmm. So we had to bring out the file. Yeah. Then we had to bring out the knife. Yeah. Then we had to bring out the cleaver. <laughs> I mean, it was getting serious. But when you really want, and think about this, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, God said, I know the plans I have for you. Yes, yes. And it ain't to hurt you. Come on. It's to prosper you, give you a hope, give you a future. So lately, as I'm going back, it's like, I used to pray those prayers. Lord, this is what I want. And Lord, would you please bless me too? And Lord, would you do this? The prayers have changed. Come on. Lord, what you want me to do today? Lord, what you want me to do? Because, you know, I went through, yeah, most of you know my story about trying to get hired on up here and all of the head interviews. Nobody called. So it's like, okay, Lord, I got it. I ain't coming up here. Okay, bye. <laughs> you know? But it's like, you have to get to the point in your life. Make that decision. It's like, what do you want, Lord, yes. for me to do? Because I have figured out that what you have in mind is a whole lot better than come anything on, I can imagine. On. Yes, yes. If I would just let you lead me, just like we just sing them song, let Jesus lead you. We just be saying it. We don't really mean it. But we need to mean it. Yeah. Yes. If we would really just let him lead us, oh my God, where would he take us if we would just let go? Yeah. Literally, let go of the will, let go of that stuff in the past, and just move forward. Isn't that yes. what the scripture says? Isn't that what it says in King James? It says, forgetting those things which are behind, yes. reaching forth unto those things which are before. Now this right here, this ain't going to get you nowhere. Mm -mm. You see, I'm looking back and reaching this way. I don't see what I'm reaching for because I'm too busy on. looking in the past. Come on. But I got to make a decision. I'm going to leave that past alone and everything that's in it, and I'm going to reach for the Lord. I'm going to reach for God. You know, I'm at the age now where I ain't got time to be playing. Mm -mm. Come on. Any age, really, we ain't got time to be playing, bro. But, I mean, I'm really at the age because I'm just, you know, hypothetically, I believe me and my husband were going to make 100, 104. He's got to be 104 for all, both of us to be alive at the same time. 50 is midlife for us. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I'm not thinking I'm in midlife right now. When I get to be 50, brother, that's midlife for me because I'm shooting for 100. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So... I ain't got time to be messing up no more. <laughs> yes. And wasting 10 and 15 years doing something that's making me miserable or 10 or 15 years hanging around with the wrong folk or 10 or 15 years just twirling my fingers and going around and around circles as George Bible, George Bible said, going around that same old mountain. And they went and the children of Israel did for 40 years. I ain't got 40 years, brother. Come on. To be going around the same mountain. So, I want to do what God had in mind when he created me in my mother's womb. Yeah. I'm seeking him. What is it that you had in mind when you made me? Come on. Yes, not what you're doing with Joyce Myers. Not what you're doing with, um, what's the pastor that writes the book, Kim? What's her name? That we have. We have her books at the house, babe. Kim Daniels. Kim Daniels, thank you. Not like her, not like any of the people I enjoy listening to. I want to be what you made me to be. To the fullest. Yes. yes. To the full. Be happy in my lane. Come on. Yeah. You know, I don't mind being a sunflower as long as I'm in the garden. Yeah. All right. You understand what I'm saying? As long as I'm doing my purpose, shine my little yellow pelts. Let the roses be the roses. Let the carnations be the carnations. I'm a sunflower, I'm a sunflower. And I need to learn how to be happy with that. Yeah. So, we need to be focused on knowing Christ, being like Christ, and to have and be all he had in mind for us yeah. when he made us. Because when you're focused on those things, guess what? You ain't got time to be thinking about stuff. Other self. Mm -hmm. You got time to be thinking about anything else. You, it's going to take up all your energy to know Christ, to be like Christ, and to be all that he has in mind for us. Because we are not going to have time to be having pity parties if we want to know Christ. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. We ain't going to have time to be holding grudges Amen. if we want to be like Christ. Amen? They crucified my Savior. And he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. See, that's what we're going for. We're shooting for that. Not quite there yet. There's some people who still, when I see them, they go, Ugh, okay? Yes. But you understand what I'm saying? I'm, trying, I'm working on that, brother. You understand? Yeah. Still up there. <laughs> okay? All right. We don't have time for a poverty mindset. Mm -mm. It is a mindset, I tell you. Poverty is a mindset. Anytime that you would live in a shack and spend $300 on a pair of shoes, something wrong with your mind. Yes. That makes sense to you. And I understand that that makes sense to the, to the poverty mindset, but that doesn't make sense to me. So therefore, I can't be entertaining that poverty mindset. My father is rich. Yes. In houses and land, he owns the wealth of the world in his hand. Mm-mm. No, can't live in a shack and wear three hundred dollars shoes. That just not that's an oxymoron. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> being afraid, I ain't got time to be afraid. I ain't got time. I don't have this. I don't have time to be afraid. Do you know how much time it takes to be afraid? To think about and be scared. That false evidence appearing real to keep looking at that false evidence and looking at the false evidence and then you don't bring your friends on over there. You see what I see? And you know, we get out of a group together and we talk about it. <laughs> you know, why we shouldn't do it. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that no more. We have got to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. We've yeah. got to lay that stuff down. We gotta let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Yeah. Let's both go. Uh-oh. Got to let some people go. Yes. Got to let some places that we like to go go. <laughs> Got to let some things go. Got to be moderate in that evening, y'all. That was for me. Yeah. It definitely wasn't for If it's for you to receive it, but that was straight from me, from the Holy Ghost. Got to be moderate in that evening. Got to let some stuff go, brother. <laughs> Got to yeah. do everything in moderation. Yeah. Got to let it go. Lay it aside. Harmful things. Forsaking anything that distracts you from being the best effective Christian that you can be. And I say effective because some of us might be stumbling blocks. Mm. People might be seeing us and our decision is an equality decision because we are Christian on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? But Monday through Saturday, we whoever we want to be. That's not right. And that's not going to work. And it's going to catch up with you, too. And isn't it funny how when the world and folks come to you and say, I thought you were a Christian. That's, that's kind of bad. That's kind of bad because you're sending off the wrong signals then. What decision did you make? Is the question I would ask you. Remember last time I talked to you, you said, what kind of witness are you? Right. If they're asking you, I thought. This is the sad. I thought you were supposed to be a Christian. Come on. Instead of when they come to you and they say, yeah, I, I knew you were, you probably was in church. Or, or it's happened to my husband before. He's like, yeah, you look like a pastor. Now, I don't know how somebody looks like a pastor. <laughs> but it's happened to him several times because I've been with him when it happens. It's like, yeah, you look like, yeah, you just look like you walk like a really. <laughs> it's like, what's the pastor walk? <laughs> you know? But anyway, but it, there's something that people should be able to identify in you that's different from the world. That's my point. Your decision is going to start here, but it's going to affect everything in your life. It's going to affect everybody and everything in your life. Some people are going to walk away. Some people will come, but God will never leave you alone. He will never leave you alone. So we want what God has for us. And we already know that we are going to have to lay aside some things and some people. God even showed us that with Paul. Y'all remember Paul, right? Paul had a reason to forget what was behind. If you are familiar with Paul's story at all, Paul was right there when they stoned the first martyr Christian. That was Stephen. Paul was standing right there. Yeah, I hold the coats. Yeah, yeah go on get him. <laughs> and they stoned him. And then he was on his way to Damascus to kill some more Christians. So Paul had some things he would like to forget. If you'll let me say. Now, I don't think any of us, I don't think any of us have physically killed anyone or participated in accessory to murder. But we probably have talked about some people. We probably said some things we shouldn't. 
we probably done some things we should, some things that we just shame of. You know, I like that new song by that guy. I can't even think of his name. But you know, his, the new song's like, shame, shame on me. That's how we all should feel sometimes and stuff. If folks were to bring up some of your past, you'd be just shame. Like, I can't believe I did that myself. Mm. But you got to put that aside. You got to put that aside. Yeah. You need to receive God's forgiveness and know this. Know that when God forgives you, he ain't like man. Come on. When God says your sins are forgiven thee, your sins are forgiven thee. Because God has already made up in his mind. If you ask him for forgiveness, he will give you forgiveness. I believe it's 1 first, John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins yeah. and are faithful and just, you know, to admit it to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. If you'll admit you did it. Come on. If you'll say the truth. Amen. 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 So, we have all known things for which we are ashamed and wish that nobody knew anything about them. But that doesn't matter. Because we're going to forget those things that are behind yes. and reach forward to the things that are before. Because we're making a decision to get us out of the way and put God first. Amen. 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 And we're wrapping this up. We live every day. I like this. I saw this in, in the commentary. It says, we live in the tension of what we have been and what we want to be. Come on. Here I am in the middle. This is what I used to be. This is what I want to be. Right. This is where I am. Mm -hmm. This is what I am. And Brother John Gray, he's a minister pastor. He preached a message, I think we still have it on our TV, that's talking about from here to there. Yeah, yeah. Just a, it, it doesn't even look like <clears throat> it's that many steps, but it's a process to get from here to there. Yes. And in the meantime, which can be a very mean time. Here's where you are. But every day we're trying to get a little bit closer. Yes, yes. Get a little bit closer. Get a little bit closer. Oh, they hit me. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to not lose any ground. I might even have to sit down after that one. That was pretty hard. But we still get a little bit closer. Every day we're in betwixt and in between. But we still strive. We press on. Isn't that what the word says? We press on toward the goal. Sometimes I just have to fall that way. Have y'all ever been tempted to really do wrong? Talk real to me. It's like when the option came to do right, do wrong, let's do wrong. And with our saved self. Y'all understand what I'm talking real here. With my saved self, the option to do wrong looked like a good option. It's like, thank you, sir. <laughs> Let it happen. <laughs> How about I help it happen? <laughs> we gotta keep moving. We gotta press. No, I gotta, I gotta press. Forget, forget that. That was old Sylvia. She would have done that. <laughs> We're gonna press this way. We're gonna press toward. You gotta grow in your knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You gotta spend your time with Him. You've got to read your Bible. Yes. Because if you're gonna put Him first, you need to put His Word in your life as well first. Amen. God said it, that's settled. Some of the things in the Bible are kind of rough and tough. I even remember there was, a, I can't remember exactly who it was, but it was in one of the Gospels where they said, this is, this is so hard. Who can have salvation? We can't attain that. This, this is hard. <laughs> but Jesus told me he was going to help him. And he still is good for that promise today. Jesus will help you. You ain't got to do it by yourself. So know this, as we continue in this series, stand to your feet, because I'm about to finish. As we continue in this series, you need to understand that the goal is, the thing you're trying to apprehend now. Yeah, we still trying to get our jobs. We're trying to do the best in our vocational ministries, as I call it. We're still looking for love. We want somebody to love us. We still want to have our own home. But we got to know God. That should be number one. We've got to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. We've got to want to be like Christ. Yes. That needs to be up there. <coughs> We've got to be all that he intended for us. 
Because as we get into his word and as we talk with him, he will let you know, this is what I want you to do. This is where I want you to be. It may be a little uncomfortable, but I'm going to be right there with you. You may not like it, but it's going to be okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're not going to be there always. Trouble don't last always. Because I guarantee you, y'all, whatever it is that we thought we might want to be, God has a better plan. He has a better plan. In fact, He already had the plan. He has the plan. All we have to do is make a decision to get ourselves out of the way and put God first. We got to put Him first. Got to put Him first in everything. Nothing is trivial with God. I even get up some morning and say, oh, man, today. Because you know what's going to happen today, so I need to be properly covered. Eat every, just talk to him just like breathing. Because I guarantee you he hears even your thoughts. Yes. Have you ever had God to do that to you? Yes. You were thinking something and then... Here it is. He's not a God to be played with. If you're going to live for Him, live for Him. Better than anybody than you could ever imagine. That's why He sent His Son to die for our sins. He knew we needed help. You weren't going to be able to keep those laws. By the time you kept all 99, it was one you missed. The Ten Commandments, try to keep them all up. There's one. But grace. trying to prosper and be prosperous and we're not making any leeway Lord or if we do we seem to lose it but Lord we are making a decision today that we're getting ourselves out of the way and we're going to follow you we're going to put you in your proper place which is firm and we thank you Father God for forgiving us for the times that we missed you and we thank you Father God for how in your awesome providential way you still managed to get us where you needed us to be. Where you need us to be. Where you want us to be. What you intended when you made us. We accept your guidance. We accept your help. We accept your strength. Because we need you. Cannot do it without you. And you never said that we had to. In fact, you intended for us to lean on you. We lean heavily upon you today, Lord. Show us your glory. 
Show us what it is you want us to do. And we thank you for supernatural strength and power to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together. Put your hands together.